And you think Monet had Poppy killed? That was a real f***ing possibility. When I brought it up to her, she threatened to kill me. And if she'd killed Kane, she was stopping her from killing us too. She's growing up super fast, becoming very much a woman stepping into her power. She has no choice, because she's been pushed in that direction. So it's time to become the boss that she's been groomed to be. That was a quote from Latoya who plays Diana Tahada, on how she's had to grow as a character because of what she's been through, who her family are and also what she's been forced into. And because of what she's been through and done, I once said that Diana could turn out to be one of the most savage Tahadas. That's thanks to her being mentored by Monet a little by Effie, losing her father and so much more. Although having said that, with it being the end of book 2 Ghost, will Diana fully fulfil her potential? I don't think so. And I think she's gonna have to do more than just to pray to save herself. So in this video, we're gonna be running through an evolution of Diana to harder throughout Power Book 2 Ghost. We're gonna look at her relationships with the family, Tariq, Effie and so on. We're then gonna round off with some thoughts and theories for season 4, based on a few of the teaser images, and why I think it might actually be time to say goodbye to Diana in Power Book 2 Ghost, season 4. We were first introduced to Diana along with the rest of the Tahadas at Zeke's party at the Tahada household, and I think instantly we knew at some point in the future, Diana would be someone who would be a love interest for Tariq. At the same time, we also knew she was going to be a problem because of the family she came from. Unfortunately, the problem that Diana had first was, it was with the boss of the household, Monet Tahada. Even though Lorenzo was calling the shots from inside prison, Monet was the one who had everybody in position on the outside. She had each of her kids playing specific positions, including Diana. She was always telling Diana what she can and can't do, very kid-like, because that's what parents normally do when you're younger. When you're younger, they kind of dictate what direction your life goes in, and I'm going to come to that point in a bit more detail in just a moment. But Monet kept her close because being her daughter, she was attached to her. And just like she said in season 1, it was very easy for her to get her in these streets. So early on we saw her mentoring and nurturing her how to become streetwise, see the signs that she could take advantage of, which would help her level the playing field in a man's world. Did you see the way he was looking at you? That look means you have power over him. And I want you to be able to see what these signs are, because if he's useful to us, you gotta use any tool at your disposal. Fast forward, there was another moment where Monet taught Diana how to use men's attraction against them. It means a man doesn't fall in love with you. He falls in love with the image of himself that he sees in your eyes. You make him think he's lit, he'll always come back to it. Now this is a tactic that Diana has tried to use a few times. She actually failed very early on with Tariq, but succeeded later on with these cops early in season 2. And Diana isn't the only one who's used this tactic. Across the Power Universe, we've seen it from multiple players. Now very early on, the problem that Diana had was, she didn't always agree with what Monet wanted for her. We all know Diana wanted to go to school, play ball and hustle at the same time. In fact, later in season 2, she specifically said she wanted to get an MBA in accounting, which is also very similar to what Tasha once studied. But I'd be even better if I took accounting in school. Since when you're interested in math? Oh, let me guess. They got just the right class up there at Stansfield. Girl, you ain't slick trying to get up there closer to read. But Monet didn't want her to go to school. She wanted her right where she could see and control her. Now, her argument would be that, Everything that she was doing was from tough love, because she's been and seen a lot more than Diana has, and she knows how unforgiving the streets can be. We also later learned that hustling in the streets weren't exactly her first choice, it was Lorenzo's. She wanted more for the family which was in the street game, hence why her exit plan was Zeke. But because Lorenzo decided this is how it was going to be, with Drew being the natural successor and Kane being the muscle, this is why Monet wanted to mentor Diana to be just like her. So she was always tougher on Diana, even more so than Drew and Kane because she was a woman who was about to enter a man's world, and Monet knew she had to get Diana ready. So from conversations about how she could use men to help her loading a gun, she was teaching her every single step of the way. Little did Monet know, she was actually creating another version of herself, just like Tariq once said to Ghost in Power, how do you expect me to be any different? And I'm just like you. How could you expect me to be any different? So all of these kids are mirrors of their parents. As much as they won't admit it, it's who they are and it's who we are also in real life. So Diana was just like Monet which we saw across many examples. Another example is how Ellie Kane was very impulsive. He had this mentality of shooting first and thinking later. But where do you guys think he got it from? Now early on, Diana wasn't against the idea of hustling like she was in season 3. In doing so, 
we saw how far she was willing to go to get what she wants, although she wasn't as smart as she thought she was. Using Lorenzo to tell Monet to let Diana to go to school, as well as a trip to Stansfield, was pretty much shut down at every single turn. Calling your father behind my back? Having your own burner? I told you girl, my house, my rules! So I think control is probably the key word, because that's what it comes down to. Diana wanted independence and to be free from the shackles of her mother. And I guess this is one of the many reasons why Diana went against Monet, which circles back to the point around parents. You try and keep a lid on these kids who are growing up and learning about the world and environment they're living in by controlling every single bit of their lives. At some point, they're just going to turn against you or do it behind your back. And that's exactly what we saw play out with all her kids. With Kane, she kept him playing the position as a muscle and in essence, replaced him with Tariq. So we all saw the moves he put into motion with the powdered sugar and so on. So all three kids, not just Diana, all three went behind Monet's back because as they grew older, as they started to learn about the world they were living in and what they wanted for themselves, they started making decisions on their own, very similar to ourselves. Our parents would have made a lot of choices for us when we were younger, but it's only when we start to want different things, or we'll learn about the real world and become more informed and knowledgeable, do we start making our own decisions. Although having said that, there is also another perspective. Sometimes these kids do need some level of control, because if they don't, then we've seen what could happen. For example, Zeke. For the first time in his life in season 2, he started making decisions for himself, where in essence, he became his own man and took control over his own life. No freaky Zeke. Not anymore. You know, this whole murder case thing, it really got my head on straight. I'm gonna be about my business now on my own shit, know what I mean? Do what I wanna do. Not what everybody tell me, even Auntie Monet. However, just have a look at what happened when he did. So there are arguments for and against, and even when Lorenzo said Diana could go to school, Monet still retained some level of power because she made sure it wasn't Stansfield. Now circling back to the beginning of Ghost, we also saw glimpses of the nosy Diana, always listening into conversations or looking into people's bags which was a foreshadow of what was to come later down the line in both season 2 and 3. And that's where Diana really started to step into the driver's seat, making chess moves of her own. Now season 2 is where we really started to see Diana trying to find her independence. Early on she showed her street smarts in terms of what she learned from Monet, but we also saw her make very similar moves to what her mother makes. Monet's someone who never really tells everybody the full plan, just like Lorenzo said in season 3, she never shows her hand. She's always keeping what she's up to very close to her chest and is very selective in what she says and what she does. For example, fast forwarding to season 3 for a moment, when Monet wanted to get rid of the Detective Whitman problem, she knew she needed Diana's help. At that moment in time, Diana was distanced from her family, but Monet knew she was the only person who could approach and manipulate Detective Whitman. Now Diana agreed, because this was a chance to get back in the good books, but Monet didn't tell her the full plan of how she intended to delete Detective Whitman, because she knew Diana would never agree to be accessory to murder. With Diana, we saw how she manipulated the truth with Tariq, but not exactly painted the picture of the full story. The same also goes with how she put the wheels in motion to have her father released. She used the Tariq favour to get a meeting with Davis McLean. She stole the money from the bar which resulted in the death of an innocent civilian. And she went and did what Monet couldn't, or should I say wouldn't, in helping her father to come home. She also used the crocodile tears to swipe Tariq's QR code and product. She kept her cards really close to her chest making sure she hid all of her chess moves. So she was behaving very similar to her mother, but just like Tariq said to Ghost, how can you expect me to be any different? White auntie? Jesus Christ, Zeke, what the f That ain't your fing auntie. That's your mother. Mo, what the f is she talking about? I think for Diana, when it came to the dinner table scene, it was a build up of a lot of moments between her and Monet, along with the rest of the family keeping secrets. There was even a moment where Diana went to actually approach Monet to talk about what she found. But because Monet continued to shut her down and treat her like a kid, Diana thought, you know what, two can play at that game. Now, do we actually blame Diana for Zeke's death? I mean, again, you can actually make arguments for and against. Yeah, she was the one who blew the lid on the secret. Yeah, she did look in the bag when she was specifically told, don't look in the bag. But I think when it comes down to it, I think everybody had a part to play. Monet for lying for years, Kane for making stupid decisions, and the same goes with Drew. Lorenzo also made a really reckless move. And then there was Zeke who was trying to take control over his own life. So at the time, when a lot of people were blaming Diana, I did think it was a little unfair, because everybody definitely has to take a fair share of the blame, mostly Monet. Now, because of the events of what happened at the end of Season 2, Diana started Season 3 in a very difficult position. 
She was blamed by Monet and shut out from the family, even when she made a hell of a lot of effort at Stansfield to put all this together for Zeke. She even had to deal with the fact that Effie was with the person she wanted to be with, when Effie was the one who told her to stay away from Tariq. She then found some comfort at first with Salim, but then she was forced to hustle at school when Lorenzo found himself in a bit of a desperate situation, which isn't what Diana wanted. Papa, don't I get to make choices about my life and what I want to do with it? You will, but in time. So this goes back to how Diana was growing up and thinking about making decisions for herself, and how sometimes our parents make decisions for us. Diana had a complete change of heart from when she approached Effie in season 2, asking her to teach her what she does. All she wanted to do now was to work her normal job and study, not this. So she was really in a difficult place at the beginning of season 3, which wasn't made easier when Monet used to manipulate her to get rid of Detective Whitman, and also when Salim tried to blackmail her. I'm not selling any drugs, Salim. Okay. Well, I'm gonna enjoy watching you squirm while I figure out what to do about it. You're done. Now this was a big no-go. You don't mess with someone like Diana, who was nurtured and mentored by someone like Monet. We all saw what she was capable of doing, not in a deadly manner, but how she could manipulate situations in her favour. One thing we should also be mindful of, which Kane mentioned a few times, is that the Tahadas do their due diligence. There's this guy Bash. He helped me and Tariq set up course correct. His name is on your corporate file and his partner's with Simon Stern. What? You don't think the Tahadas do their due diligence? So this was Diana doing her due diligence, standing her ground and showing that she wasn't to be messed with, but things were about to take a huge turn for a character. Even with the threat of jail time hanging over her head, Diana remained strong in again, a very difficult position, and the fact that she was actually caught up in her family's mess, she made up her mind. She wanted out the family business for good, she wanted to transfer schools and get out of the city, and look, she definitely was thinking along the right lines. She didn't want to get caught up in a family drama, she didn't want to end up in jail or dead either, but with Lorenzo no longer in the picture, guess who was back in control? It's either her or us. Both Drew and Diana knew for as long as Monet was around, they'd never have control over their own lives. It was Monet's way or no way, even after they confronted her about having their father killed. They knew they had to make a choice, and what followed is one of the reasons why I've always said over the last year or two that Diana has the potential to be the most savage out the lot. She was willing to throw Tariq under the bus to protect her future, all while using him to assassinate her mother. However, there was a twist to the story. I'm tough on y'all. Especially you. Because I love you. And I'm sorry. I don't know any other way to show it. For the first time ever in Ghost, we actually saw Monet opening up to Diana and apologise. It wasn't like the half-hearted apology like earlier on in the season. This time she really meant what she said. She told her she didn't want this life, Lorenzo did. She was sorry for raising her kids like soldiers, but it was the only way she knew because of Lorenzo. So I do think Monet was sincere in her apology, and so did Diana. Instantly she had second thoughts about what she pre-planned with Tariq, but it was too late. The wheels she put in motion couldn't be undone, and the repercussions will be felt in season 4 in more ways than one. There's no doubt, Diana will definitely get what's coming to her, as well as Drew. Both of them now want out the family business and want to forge their own paths, but that's going to be virtually impossible under someone like Nomar. They made a clear choice at the end of season 3, which was to seek protection and get closer to Nomar. And what I would say is, you made your bed so go lie in it. Let's see what they're made of when the going gets tough. Let's see when Monet, Kane and Tariq find out that they were the ones who orchestrated this assassination attempt, not Tariq. Diana's definitely going to need more than just a prayer, and it is quite ironic. For those who have followed my breakdowns over the years, we remember a while ago, I mentioned sometimes people turn to God when they're at their worst moment, or when something bad happens, but God is the first person you should turn to, no matter what faith you follow. But again, what I would say to Diana is, she needs more than just a prayer in season 4, because Tariq is going to be on demon time. When Monet finds out about her betrayal, I wouldn't even be surprised if she did the unthinkable. And in my opinion, even though I do think Drew will be the next to harder to bite the dust, I do kind of hope Diana does as well. If we had a season 5 then I would have said, you know what, keep her around, because she's got a lot more room to grow and develop, but we're not getting a season 5. So I'm hoping she pays in some shape or form, which doesn't necessarily have to be with death. She could end up in prison. She could end up being stuck with a life she doesn't want where her independence is stripped away from her, which is a prison in itself. She could also lose everything and everybody around her. So let's just see which direction they take her character. 
Now having said that, something I've spoken about before is Diana potentially being pregnant. And being pregnant doesn't necessarily mean the baby would be Tariq St. Patrick's. Let's also not forget she did sleep with Salim. If we're talking about how Diana could survive the wrath of Monet, Tariq or say Kane, if she tells him that she's pregnant, then I think that completely changes the situation. So I do think we are in for a twist or two as we always are with Ghost. I also wouldn't be surprised if she put everything on Drew, because power runs on patterns of play, and Lorenzo did something very similar when he got rid of Zeke, he put the blame on the GTG. And we all know how much Diana has learned from both parents, not just from Monet, so it really would be another savage move from Diana, which definitely isn't the beyond the realms of possibilities. Now can we also rule out her working with Tariq again? I know it looks highly unlikely after the ending of season 3, but we have to remember, things can change very quickly in the world of Ghost. You know, she wants out the game and so does Tariq, but then there's the added complication of her setting up Tariq. So should he trust her if he was to work with her to get out from under Nomar's thumb? Definitely not. But if it benefits them in terms of bringing down Nomar, then yeah, I can kind of see them working together, but Tariq definitely wouldn't trust her again. But let's see what we see of Diana in the official trailer, which I think will drop in early May. But that's a breakdown of the evolution of Diana and where we are with her character heading into season 4. So drop all your thoughts and theories down below in the comment section and let me know how you see this ending for Diana because in my opinion, I reckon she's got a bullet with her name on. But drop all your thoughts down below in the comment section and as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.